fully understand how dangerous one blow to the head can be for them. Throughout my time in high school, I was a part of the Sports Career Academy, and being on the field during football games, players leaving the game with a concussion can be very common. While learning about concussions over and over again each year, I came to find out how delicate our heads can be. By one single hit to your head, your life can change dramatically within seconds. Athletes aren't the only ones who are known to sustain a concussion. You could easily be jogging, running, and trip your head, and hit your head on the curve, and you could sustain a concussion. Today, I would like to explain to you the dangers a concussion has to offer for athletes. Before I get into the dangers of concussions, first I would like to explain to you what a, uh, what a concussion is, the symptoms, and the treatment. A concussion is a traumatic brain injury that affects your brain function due to a blow to your brain or head. The brain is made of soft tissue and is cushioned by spinal fluid and encased in a protective shell of the skull. When you sustain a concussion, the impact can jolt your brain, making it move back and forth. From the movie Concussion starring um, Will Smith, he uses a jar with water in it and like a ball, and you shake it and that's supposed to represent your brain hitting your skull. One of the main problems with concussion is the sign of symptoms may not show up immediately. Common symptoms after a traumatic brain injury are loss of memory, headaches, and also confusion. When receiving a blow to the head, it's important to seek medical attention as soon as possible. Treating a concussion is very important because lack of treatment may worsen, may worsen your body and can be fatal. Um, on top of the common symptoms, some may show later after injury, which can be memory loss, personality change, sensitivity with noises and light, sleep disturbance, and psychological problems such as like, depression. Anyone who experienced a brain injury needs monitoring in the hours afterwards and emergency care symptoms tend to worsen. There are three special tests a patient can co may complete, a neurological exam, a cognitive test, and an image test. Rest is the most appropriate way to allow your brain to recover from a concussion and important to mentally and physically rest. Avoid physical activities such as sports and heavy movement. Limit activities that require thinking and mental concentration, such as limit school works, no video games, you can't watch TV. Now that, now that you understand what a concussion is, the signs, the symptoms, and the treatment, now I would like to explain to you the dangers of concussion with, within a sport and the effects it has on athletes. As said before, you can be jogging, trip and fall, and most likely to sustain a concussion. Athletes who play heavy contact sports are at a higher risk to sustain a concussion. The most common sports known for concussions are, are soccer, basketball, wrestling, wrestling, and rugby. As all of these sports are a key factor to concussion, football is the top sport to be careful with. During the game of football, heads collide together every second during practice or a game. Players receiving a concussion also may develop chronic traumatic and so forth. CTE. CTE is a degenerative brain condition believed to be caused by a repetitive hits to the head. CTE can be caused by numerous concussions and no care, and the CTE can only be diagnosed through an autopsy. More than 100 former NFL players received a post-mortem diagnosis of CTE. From JOMA Network states a study that researchers have collected 220 autopsy brains from former NFL players. Of those brains, nearly 177, almost 90% were diagnosed with CTE. With sustaining a concussion and CTE, it can leave the it can leave the player in long-lasting symptoms that it can that can affect the individual and their families. Junior Seau is a victim of a brain injury. A de as depression, memory loss, and mood changes are symptoms of both, this injury affected him in a negative way. Junior Seau committed suicide in May two 2012, two years after retiring as one of the primary linebackers in NFL history. On January 2013, Seau's brain had tested positive for chronic traumatic CTE. An article from the San Diego, an article from the San Diego Union um, interviews Junior Seau's family. 
The Y says, I think it's important for everyone to know that Gina did indeed suffer from CTE, stating his wife, Gina Seo. It's important that we take steps to help, to help, to help, and we certainly don't want to see anything like this happen again to any of our athletes. There are many athletes who have died due to, the, due to a head collision, and scientists are working on, on are working to find a solution to discover CTEs before it's too late. Athletes face, athletes face, during practice, athletes face, um, they play like very aggressively, they face a higher risk of concussion. It's important, it's important to teach young athletes the type of danger each sport has to offer. Giving each individual information of concussions can help them grow as a strong player and individual. It's important to talk with athletes about the importance of reporting a concussion. Um, coaches should create an action plan that includes information how to teach athletes how to lower their chances of getting a concussion. Special equipment is very important to use during the practice and games. The Vice Zero Helmet created by Sam Rod, a neurosurgeon and medical director of the Seattle Sports Concussion Program, created an outer shell, acts like a car bumper because it flexes on impact and immediately bounces back. With this presentation, I hope to have to help. I hope you have a clear understanding of how important it is to know what a concussion is and the negative effect it has on someone's life. You also have you also have now information on the signs, symptoms, treatments, and how athletes are affected, and how to prevent this type of injury. If you know anyone who has sustained a concussion or yourself, get a medical medical assistance before it's too late. All right, well, I thought you had a good, clear statement of what your topic and purpose were at the beginning. There was a solid preview. In fact, the structural stuff, I think, is the strongest part of the speech. Uh, it, I can see the supporting structure. I hear internal transitions uh, pretty clearly. I think you've got a lot of supporting material that is not being cited in the presentation. It sounds to me like there are sections where you are reading something that, you, that came from a source that you probably encountered, but you don't cite that information and it uh, sounds too much like you are reading and it also doesn't sound like you are giving appropriate credit on that so you have to be caref careful about that. There was one particular line where you were describing uh, Junior Seau for instance as the primary linebacker of the NFL I think probably it says premier linebacker in the NFL uh, and it's it's like this is this is something that this is not, these are not your words, so if they're not your words, there needs to be a source citation on it, and we're not getting that. The only specific source citation I heard in the presentation was a reference to the, uh, the, um, the study of the 220 brains that uh, became available for autopsy. Uh, there was, in fact, a source citation provided there. The rest of the time, the closest you came to giving a source citation was a reference to the movie uh, that talked about concussions, and it didn't really seem to be anything more than a brief reference to uh, what was going on in the movie. It, you didn't really cite it for uh, information. You've got a whole lot of information on the slides that you never refer to. There are pictures that you never talk about. Uh, the explanation, the helmet at the end, for instance, I think especially could have used some explanation. You're just kind of assuming that we'll be able to look at what's behind you and figure out what it is that we're supposed to get out of that and I think it needs to be integrated into your speech a little bit more efficiently. Uh, the, the presentation issues, uh, there's a lot of reading. Uh, I think you're better in the few sections, the very small sections where you improvise, look up, talk about uh, what you're discussing, kind of summarize what you're saying, and then move on to the next point. That's where you're most effective in the presentation. Otherwise, it's just back down to reading, and your voice is very uh, monotone and 
there's not uh, variation or any interest that's being displayed there, and I think you ought to have some of that. Uh, at the beginning, you made a reference to kind of a personal experience uh, being connected to players on the field and uh, you know how scary it might be to have that. I think that's you need more of that sort of thing in the presentation. Uh, like I said, the visuals are okay, but they you don't do much with them except have them in the background. They're wallpaper that uh, sometimes correlates to what you're talking about, but often does not, and there's information back there that doesn't really get explained. The one place where you do sort of integrate it is when you get to that list of the sports where, the, where head injuries might be typical. Other than that, though, the, like I said, the references to what's on the visuals is thin. All right, thank you.